Good morning, everybody. It's 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. I am so happy to be here with you today. So this is Freestyle Fridays, which means that you get to ask me whatever question you want in your business with the hopes that I'm going to figure out how to solve it. If I don't know how to solve it, I guarantee you, I probably know somebody who can. So here's what's great. You get to just Type in your questions. If you're watching this on YouTube later, um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have the questions for you, but I'll repeat the questions and then uh, and then I'll answer them. So good morning, Melanie Breaker from Barbados. We'll actually be there uh, next month. We'll be there for two weeks next month. So um, we should definitely get together while I'm there. Suzanne, how are you? Cassandra, good morning. Mariana, good morning. Rosemary, good morning. Hey, Holly, how are you doing today? Hi, Barbara. Hi, you guys. All right, you guys. Good morning, Amy. Let's rock and roll this morning. So we've got 20 minutes, so this will fly by quick. And you ask me whatever questions you want in your business, and I will answer them. So nothing is off the board. So uh, I might ask you additional questions about clarification, but please, you can ask me anything personal, you can ask me anything business-wise, you can ask me anything about yourself, myself, whatever you want. So first question, where is the first question? Hi, Kelly Wolf, how are you? Melanie, uh, yay, was, uh, was at your favorite cafe this morning in Barbados and thought of you. Thank you, I can't wait to be there. It's gonna be so fun. Uh, we have some amazing friends coming. Uh, Alex Mendozian's coming with his his amazing better half, Sandra. So it's going to be some fun people hanging out with us out there. And good morning, Kim. You guys are all like bright, chipper, and happy this morning. But where's my questions? Where's my morning questions on business? So this is Freestyle Fridays, which means that I have no content prepared. I am just answering questions. So what do you want me to answer or what do you want me to solve in your business to be able to create an extraordinary result today? Okay, so, um, and so Cassandra, I love insight on my list building. I'm working on creating freebies for four new opt-ins. Okay, so first, when I hear four new opt-ins, that freaks me out. Uh, do you have opt-in types that you feel work better than others? So yes, so Cassandra, I would recommend that you don't do four new opt-ins because there's this like um, there's this natural drive that entrepreneurs have to get ahead faster, right? Like we get so frustrated because we're not ahead faster. We want to be ahead faster. We thought we'd be further ahead than we are right now, and it's actually the way that our brains are wired, right? But you actually need to temper that, right? Like you have to temper that. So, because pushing harder, pushing faster, it actually doesn't get you a better result. It's actually getting intimate with whatever it is that you're working on that gets the better result. I know, fucking frustrating, but it is what it is, right? Like, I could lie to you and say, here's four different opt-ins, but the truth is, is, like, I remember being with Russell Brunson, who he's got funnel hackers coming up here soon that I'll be at. Um, he, uh, he, what, there was a few of us that like rented a place in Las Vegas and we all kind of went on a mini vacation and um, we were brainstorming different things that were working and not working. And he basically was like, he shut down everything and focused on one funnel, which means that you're really focusing on one direct generation coming in. Now, don't get me wrong. We do create like, we do create the same product and we'll position it for multiple different markets. Because, for instance, if I'm talking to someone in network marketing about, let's say, list building, um, I would use the words like, you know, finding more reps, you know, um, you know, uh, selling more products, but really finding more reps that could help you build out your network marketing company, right? So we actually take our our same funnels and we position the front end a little bit different based on the avatar of the person. So now saying that, um, you know, one of my best you know, my best front end lead gen was my five day challenge. The challenge is, is that when I don't run it live, it doesn't have the same conversion. So that's kind of like when I want to do it live and do it once and run a five day challenge, it's incredible, right? It's incredible for running Facebook traffic too, which not all things are. It's incredible with conversions on the back end when you go from the five day challenge 
to let's say a webinar and then you make an offer on the webinar that's an amazing funnel that works really well and you actually don't have to be great at marketing you have to be great at giving right meaning that if you do the five-day challenge where you're really giving some great content then what happens is you'll have a great conversion on the back end on the webinar right so um, you know my book is great but it's not just my book right like it's actually when I do when I give my book away for free and I put a um, a spot for people to leave their phone numbers the only people who bought I haven't checked since uh, February of this year but the only group that bought were the people who actually put their phone numbers in uh, in you know the the registration page so but we do text message marketing on the back end of that right it's nothing complicated but we send them like once every couple of weeks a text message from me because people get annoyed if they get a lot of text messages but once every couple couple of weeks we'll send a text message letting them know that maybe we'll do like a sprint in the office where we'll do open office hours where we'll coach for a day for free and then we coach right and then what we do is we go is this our avatar or is this someone who complains a lot right so here's a big highlight you guys if you ever talk to someone who's putting another coach down, big indicator to not take them. That's actually a rule of thumb inside of our call center, inside of our coaching center, is if we hear somebody that is complaining about a past person or coach that they've worked with, we don't let them in. And the reason why we don't let them in because we know we're gonna be subject to that ourselves. Um, I just hired somebody on our team and she worked for somebody pretty brutal, like really brutal, before me. And um, and all of her positioning with this other person that she worked with was all on responsibility. Like it was, so the only reason why I knew it was brutal is because there were like all these last minute things that this person had to do. And so I finally looked at her and I said, I'm just curious why you stayed in a work environment like that. And she had her answer, and that was the first indicator that there was anything, um, like that she had anything underneath the surface of frustration about this person. My point in sharing that with you is you want to make sure that your lead gem is awesome, Cassandra, but you also want to make sure that you do everything you can to not bring toxic people into your space, which are going to happen anyway as you get bigger. It's just natural. As reading on a thread when Wayne Dyer was alive, uh, people like attacking him on a thread and I I'm like spent time with Wayne Dyer. He's an amazing man total giver, but um, You know people will find negative things about everyone. So I hope that helps Cassandra So five day challenge is amazing um, if you have a book, it's amazing But um, what you do on the back end like the conversion part is really important. Okay, so um, All right, Holly uh, how how to up my leadership during my sales calls? Awesome question. Um, I I train a group called Sales Team Authority where it's my clients of marketing mastery. We offer a program for them um, if they want us to actually train salespeople for them. And one of the biggest things that I coach them is actually in mindset. Like we teach them strategies, we teach them how to follow up. Like for instance, uh, a great follow-up strategy is getting people to consume more information because then they can decide on whether they love you or don't love you, right? The deal is, is you want to create raving fans and screaming lunatic, 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 I don't think, lunatic, lunatic haters, right? Like if you don't create haters and raving fans, which is a really hard thing to get used to, until you can do that, you actually know that your marketing, your messaging, and your style are not on point. So when you're selling it's kind of the baseline of learning your leadership where you don't get frustrated right like it's like frustration is the key to broke ass lifestyle frustration is like when you open up frustration and you allow it in it actually causes broke breakdown um it like you just you got to get good with frustrations like nobody will ever live into your expectation Probably people won't close in your sales cycle when you want them to or even when you think they should and you have to learn how to have a lot of patience and flexibility not only with yourself so my my coaching for you Holly is yourself is really important 
and and really watch when you're emotionally triggered right people say I'm not emotionally triggered but they're complaining that's emotionally triggered right like I had a, I had an employee go pay thirty thousand dollars for me to speak at an event and I lost that thirty thousand dollars because it was the wrong event she didn't do certain things like she didn't like we do you have to have a room guarantee for me to come speak if I'm paying to speak and she didn't do any of that and so I lost thirty thousand dollars and never got to speak there was like literally seven people in the room for thirty thousand dollars okay so you need to just stop and say do you know that I never got angry at her once I never got angry at anybody in my staff I you know don't get me wrong I was like this sucks this sucks but I didn't lash out I didn't attack I sat down we coached about it you know she felt horrible you know but at the end of the day you know shit happens and I would say Holly my best advice to you when you're selling to up your leadership is to actually really learn how to roll be flexible be easy on yourself and be easy on other people because success goes like this when you can handle your emotional triggers if you don't which will ha what will happen is you will quit too soon and guess what the doorway is to quitting frustration so I hope that helped um, hey Andrew Atlee how are you what's up what's up you guys did some amazing things last night I can't wait to hear we have a whole group of people who uh, got out of, got out of the way of their selves last night created a ridiculous result in their own personal life in their business and um, still went out and fed, uh, raised like six thousand dollars in a couple hours for the homeless powerful when you look up and you become a giver Christina, I just finished my first online interview series and done with my and done with my survey. Should I cold call the people that left their phone numbers on the survey? That's great. Let me give you some positioning with cold calling. Or wait and or wait and email my list for a couple of weeks and get them on the phone through calls to action. You should so you don't have to wait. You can call, right? You could call the people on the survey, but have a reason why you're calling them that's authentic. Like I'm a big fan on the come from being good, right? Like being really clean. So what would be the advantage if you called them? Well, you could talk to them about like whatever your survey was about. You could talk to them about um, the like their genuine answers, right? Like like I saw that you know this was something that was glaring in your survey that um, that you're having a big struggle with. And you left your phone number, so I thought I would give you a call and see if I can make a difference for you. That's a great intro, right? Then first lead, you know our I solve model because I taught it to you weeks ago. First lead with the conversation of getting to know them and serving them, right? So I solve, like, you know, what do you really want? So first connect with, first connect with like the glaring problem on the survey. And just you know, tell them you saw this, and you're wondering if, if you can support them on this. They'll start opening up. As they start opening up, then you move the conversation into leadership, where you're leading them with the I and I solve. Like, what is the number one thing that's most important to you? So the way you kind of pull that back in is you say, "Okay, Teresa, let's just stop for a minute, because people can go on about complaining forever. Like, you open up that string and." like all of us can go there right and so what you want to do is you want to pull it back in so you're not on the phone for two hours and get roped into that rabbit hole so you pull it back in. you say can you just stop for a second she said let me ask you a question like let's kind of refocus on where you want to go what is the number one thing that's most important to you that if I solved it for you on this call would really make a huge difference for you now you're moving somebody into vision and that's the only way that people get out of a slump anyway is focusing on vision it's not focusing on the problem right and so then go through the I solve simultaneously while you're doing that you know write the, 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 the emails or the videos that I taught you two weeks ago which is um, you know credibility vulnerability you know literally go through that whole training again and and like go into like if, if you're not finding they're listening to you then go into a vulnerability email or video make sure your videos are no longer than two to five minutes ideally it'd be great if they're two to three minutes okay and give to them 
And then you can move into emails where you do calls to action, which is actually coming up in your next training. All right, cool. Uh, Yvette, how do you leverage unexpected publicity to generate new people on your email list and additional engagement? You know, uh, I don't know what you mean by unexpected publicity. Um, so for instance, you know, uh, a group of our clients last night ended up on the news because of some of the good things they were doing in the world. And, and also because of somebody in the group looking up and using their skills to be able to get more publicity, right? And so my point in sharing that with you is, you know, um, I'm not a PR like specialist. I'll never claim to give you advice on things that I'm not good at, right? So I love PR, I love going on media, I love using, you know, the, I love getting articles written on the Huffington Post. Um, you know, Ben, who we had on like last week, I think it was last week, no, it was this week, wow, things go fast, um, on Willpower Doesn't Work, he writes on medium.com, and he just did a whole training for Marketing Mastery on how he gets 20,000 emails a month writing on medium.com. So, um, you know, which is added, exposure and media. So there's so many tactics for things like that. It's what tactic are you gonna focus on to really drive deep and get a really great result, right? So, you know, Ben focuses on medium.com. You know, he's, you know, was writing four to five uh, articles, if not six a week for months to get traction with no results for months. And then it starts to kick up. So my point is, is like, imagine if he just wrote two or three articles for a few weeks and then gave up, or imagine if he worked on it for two months and was get, not getting any results and got frustrated and shut down and got mad, right? Like, so um, my suggestion is that's what most people do and so that they don't dive down deep in the intimacy of one thing. So, um, you know, people like Jackie Cote, people like Lisa Richardson, they're really good at uh they're really good at pr so if it's like real media media i would go to those ladies and get those answers um when i do do a lot of media what we do is we actually change my home page so it's set up for media for instance media hate like landing they don't like landing on registration pages where they have to give their information they actually like landing on sites that might have a free gift on it but they have like a lot of, you know, a lot of content that they can see. They like to see sizzle wheels of you speaking or other media placements. They like to see other media placements on your website. So again, do you see how when you kind of go deep on something, you get the most out of it? So I know your question is, how do I leverage unexpected media? And the answer is the best you can. I mean, there's not really a great answer on that. That's like, make sure that you're giving. You know, like if you've got an upcoming media thing coming up, make sure you're clear about what your main position is in the marketplace. Like, for instance, I can teach I can teach how to create referral programs. I can teach how to you know put you know 700 people in a live a live three day event. Um, I can teach messaging. I can teach how to run high level membership programs. All these things I actually do very successfully. Um, but I teach those in my marketing mastery training. But I and I don't I don't really talk about that on media a lot or or even on <coughs> excuse me <coughs> even on our blogs a lot because the base of my let's call it funnel event is Pace Club or List Power where I teach people how to build audiences first. And there's a fundamental reason why I do that. People make more money when they actually get through that process. I also wean out toxic people and people who are not really going to do the work and with a loving a loving positioning here people who it's really not a priority for them to give up being right and and take on being rich right like there 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 is a deciding factor and so all my baseline of information is around building this audience so that like what is your baseline that you want to bring people up through because that creates culture tweaks in your client base. Like when you get to marketing mastery, the client base is very warm. It's it's very non-complaining. It's very supportive. Like people are like helping each other grow. Like but in Pace Club, it's you know like people love Pace Club because it's very structured. It's you know we're feeding you information one by one. 
right? And so other than the group that's going through right now, there's like 20 people who are very angry about not moving fast enough, right? And so that would be a perfect example on weeding out toxicity as you go to the top, so you funnel up. So if I had unexpected media, I would be talking about the bottom of my funnel and weeding up, right? So that you're funneling up into what you want to do. So what's the main position or the main topic that you need to talk about that all your clients need to understand to be able to get the best results with you? Does that make sense? So, okay, guys. Awesome. I hope that helped. I will um, go through the comment section and keep answering questions. So please feel free to keep answering questions. If this was helpful for you, please share this with, with someone else. Tag somebody else. Share it in the Facebook uh, Facebook uh, notification so that I can see that this actually was helpful for you. It lets me know the content that I'm sharing makes a difference so that on the regular coffees with Shanda Monday through Thursday, because Fridays are Freestyle Fridays, I could actually take some of the information and put it into training. All right, you guys, here's to an extraordinary day. Here's to creating a result that wasn't going to happen no matter what, unless you showed up today. Here's to being flexible. Here's to walking through frustrations. I get them every single day. Here's to being flexible with yourself, flexible with other people, and really rising to the top. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.